what do we really know about the virus? I still hear a lot of people saying, look, this is nothing much more than flu. What is the case fatality rate? And, and do we know if quarantines work? Um, I, so I think we need to talk about the virus in two different ways. There is, if you are unlucky enough to be infected, what happens then? And then the other part of it is how many people are getting infected and how quickly. So on that first part, we know that it's substantially more severe than flu. So at the individual level, it is, it is not like seasonal flu. We're messaging this very strongly to healthcare workers that we know the consequences of being infected with this are substantially greater than seasonal flu. As to how many people are getting infected um, and what's and how that's happening around the world and in different affected countries, that's a that's a more complicated picture. Um, what is it substantially worse than seasonal flu? What does it actually? I, I don't know if we're looking at symptoms or you know how much of a burden will this put on, on the health services? Um, so, first of all, from observation, from the first affected city in Wuhan, um, within a very relatively short period of, of weeks when they didn't know it was there and when it grew rapidly, we know that it um, it, it placed very severe demands on their health services um, in, a, in a way they probably had not experienced before. So we know its potential with any, within any one city to, um, to present significant uh, challenges to a healthcare service is very high. Uh, we can think about that in terms of different statistics and, and, and growth rates, but essentially we've observed that in the first affected city. Professor Riley, we are absolutely honored to have you on with us today. You are the expert at how these things happen in cities and then they move out to the country, the dynamics, the geography of viruses. Extrapolate Wuhan to northern Italy. Extrapolate Wuhan to not yet Florida or a first case in Lithuania. How does a virus move from an urban Wuhan out to rural society? So the, the, the first thing we have to look at the full story in Wuhan. So as rapid as the initial epidemic was there, they introduced very stringent social distancing and all the evidence suggests that they have turned it around with that policy. It was extremely um, strong. It was an extremely strong intervention, but it seems to have turned it around. So if we want to extrapolate to other places, we have to think about how people will react to possibly voluntarily reduce their social contacts, right. and then possibly how governments may choose to encourage them or not. Those are the key factors with any kind of extrapolation. Yeah. With time, and we'd love to have you on again, Professor Riley. We're gonna have to go. I have one final question. What would you advise Heathrow? What would you advise JFK? They are the road to Canterbury of the modern global economy. What do you tell the airport at Shanghai in, in Singapore? What do airports do? I believe there's a, there are levels of screening that are going on and will be somewhat helpful. But the general consensus among the scientific community is, is that it's likely that seeding has already occurred to the very highly connected countries. We don't know for sure, but we would expect there well, may be is, some very small... this is small... too important, Professor. Are you telling me with the seeding that we should expect in the next number of days and next number of weeks to see a first derivative or second derivative movement in the persistency of the virus? I, I, I think that in the U.S. already, you've observed a case in San Francisco that doesn't have a direct travel link. So I wouldn't want to extrapolate massively from that, but with the testing that's going on at the moment, you have already observed a locally infected case. And I would emphasize that observation rather than giving specific predictions.